All right, Islam, Islam, everybody. Thank you for uh, tuning in to this video. Thank you for tuning in um, to this uh, study session. Um, today's video will be over the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations. And basically this will be a recap of J. Jermaine Bay's um, study sessions that um, have been going on for the past several weeks on Monday nights. Um, this, this document, amongst many other documents dealing with diplomatic relations, is a good initiatory phase to understand in relation to statehood. Okay, so let's just get straight to it. and touch base on the reality of things. So we don't just wanna read the black and white, we, we wanna talk about how we can exercise this, right? We gotta think on multi-dimensional. We gotta think on three, three dimensions or three different levels, if you wanna say. More than one level, okay, in some of these articles. So starting off, we see that obviously states parties are the present convention, right? So it's states, right? This is not going over overseas as, you know, whatever your group is to so-called establish diplomatic relations without being a state first. You have to be a state, okay? This is the box we have to check. So as we continue, we see recalling the peoples. As we read these articles like this, the, the sentences like this, it says recalling, having in mind, believing, realizing, affirming that, et cetera, et cetera. This is basically all in reference of, okay? So this is what you call the whereas section, okay? So this section is basically the section and when you're enacting a law that you're basically referencing to, giving reference of, okay, what, what treaties, what documents, so that certain people can um, can um, go back and see what type of uh, treaties give you this power to do to enact this law or to enforce this law? Okay, so we see that recalling the peoples of all nations from ancient times having recognized that the status of diplomatic agents having in mind the purpose and principles of the Charter of the United Nations, right? So, um, and it goes down to basically say, that the Charter of the United Nations gives us his power, right? As we read down to Article 1, it gives us um, the definitions, okay? For the purpose of the present convention, the following expressions shall have the meanings hereunder assigned to them. The head of the mission is the person charged by the sending state with the duty of acting in that capacity. Right, so we have a whole lineup of definitions. Okay, that's important. Now, throughout this video, I won't be reading every single point. Okay, but I will be highlighting um, the key points. All right, so we can talk about. You can go back and read more so on the um, the definitions on your own time. And we'll talk about them as we go throughout this, this convention. So article two says, the establishment of diplomatic relations between states and the permanent diplomatic missions takes place by mutual consent. Okay, so what is, what is diplomatic relations all about? Diplomatic relations is about friendly application, friendly mediumships, right, before we do anything, 
Why? Because we have a treaty of peace and friendship, right? Not only do we have a treaty of peace and friendship, but this is based on political principles, okay, diplomatic relations, okay, in general. So in order to grow, right, there's diplomatic relations, but there's also what we call recognition. So as more states develop, they'll have to send their letters of recommend, uh, recognition and receive letters of recognition from other more states. And so the, the, th this is a buildup process. Diplomatic relations is the same yet different from recognition. Okay, it's a buildup process. So if states wouldn't be recognized, none of these diplomatic relations should be kept for a numerous amount of reasons, especially in more states. But this this is the difference between the two. We're going, we're going to explain the difference between the two as we continue. So um, it's, it's mutual consent, right? Obviously by, between the states. So is the United States a state or is it a corporation? So the whole thing is, is about checking the boxes. We have to, in order to get be in a certain arena, you have to check the boxes. What boxes? What are the boxes? The boxes are the instructions. Are you, are you applying the instructions to whatever convention that you're trying to enforce? That's the box, whatever instructions are. So in order to enforce a treaty, what do you, what, what's the boxes you have to check before that? You have to establish yourself as a state as we get elected officials, right? The inauguration, et cetera, establish yourself as a state and then be able to enforce these treaties. So um, as we continue, right? We understand that it takes mutual consent. Article three, the, dip, the functions of diplomatic missions consist inter alia in representing the sending state in the receiving state. Okay. Um, let's read the next one right quick. Protecting in the receiving state the interests of the sending state and its nationals within the limits permitted by international law. Okay, so let's pause right quick. Sending state and receiving state. Who is the sending state? Anybody want to take a guess? Who is the sending state and receiving state is? No, yeah, I'm not sure. Okay. The sending state, I guess, and the receiving guess state, the like... receiving state in this case, right? The receiving state would be us as more states. The sending state would be the United States acting as the United States of America. So, why would it be that? Because if we look back at the treaty, Right, it, we we just plugging and playing, right? We picking up where we left off. Where do we leave off at? Where we left off at the fact that the Sultan of Morocco, Treaty of Peace and Friendship, right? They received, they accepted Americans to be on this land, right? They were the sending state. United States was a sending state. They came here. We received them. Right? We're the receiving state. So being that we're accepting them, they're in our jurisdiction, they're on our landmass, right? We gave them limited jurisdiction. Right. So so the receiving state would be Morocco or the more states. Sending states would be whoever um, has sent these diplomats or these representatives or delegates 
um, to whatever, to wherever uh, they went. Right. So being that they were in our landmass and nobody technically sent them, if you want to say Great Britain, you can, you know, but um, they, we, this is, this is where we have to think on multiple levels a little bit, but we're going, we're going to talk about more about that as we read these articles. So it says, C says negotiating with the government of the receiving state. Okay, so we're talking about the functions of diplomatic mission on a diplomatic mission, right? So negotiating with the government of the receiving state. Okay, so remember the first box is the checks is the estate. Okay, so taking taking United States to court, we got to make sure everybody's box up check. What? What happens when you don't show up? Well, you start to acquiesce. If you can't check the boxes, you, you got to acquiesce. So this is where you know a, a long list of things start to come into play as far as liquidation, um, a, a numerous amount of things. So. Um, negotiating with the government of a receiving state, asserting, ascertaining, excuse me, by all lawful means, conditions and developments in the receiving state and reporting thereon to the government of the sending state, promoting friendly relations between the sending state and the receiving state and developing their economic, cultural and scientific relations. Okay, so, but then Article Three so far, specifically E, you see where it says developing their economic, cultural, and scientific relations. Okay, so let's pause right there and go to this. This is from uh, France and United States of America case. Okay, it says the sovereign, this, this is the triple principles I'm about to read. Okay, the triple principle the J. Bay speaks on a lot. Triple principles, this is an active voucher series, right? This, these triple principles what is it? The sovereignty and independence of His Majesty the Sultan. Right. So we got sovereignty and independence at the first triple principle. What what does that mean? We establish ourselves as state, right? And independence means it's totally separate from the United States, right? No EINs, no none of that. No USA passports, no none of that. Sultan needed no USA passport. We don't know none of that. Right. But what is the Sultan in this case? The Sultan is the Moorish state. Okay. So until we replace our old time religion, right, our old time ways of Islam, what is our old time way? Our old time customs, traditions, practices, ways of governing government, governing this land, i.e., government. We're reintroducing that, right? By first learning government from the Europeans, right? While we reinstitute our old time ways that have been um, missing for quite some time. So the sovereignty and independence establish yourself in the state, sovereign and independence. The second principle, integrity of his domains or integrity of domains is the by far the hardest principle um, or the um, the principle that will give you the most experience to exercise because integrity of domains is you creating your state IDs and enforcing that. What is that going to do? Take experience, okay? Um, that's going to take people having to be familiar 
that's going to that may startle a few egos right um integrity of domains is consular court documents being sent out right and respected right this is you exercising your laws in your state because what is your domain your domains is your state i.e your country state is another name for country right so if state is not only a political government state is not only your state of mind it is also abstract when you're talking about political science or the metaphysics of law if you will but integrity of domains is also talking about state which is also talking about the country is with right we understand that the more science tip of america is not a state as i reiterated several times right the more science temple america is not a country right that's not the name of the country right it's a theocratic government in another state so the integrity of his domains or the integrity of your domains the state being able to put people on notice exercising your laws right in your state being able to the integrity is even when you're not around they respect you so they should do what's right it shouldn't take trial and error it shouldn't take for you to or for them to bump into you but what is it truly going to take it's going to take for us to have to enforce that by taking them to the icj right so integrity of his domains or integrity of domains is Second. So the, I'm sorry to cut you off. We said the, the ICJ. Yeah, the International Court of Justice. International Court of Justice. Okay. So you have the International Court of Justice. You have what's called the ICC, which is the International Criminal Court. And that's for uh, personal when individuals are being taken. ICC. So the ICJ is for states, state, state, state versus state. Okay. So, so we then we have econo the third principle is economic liberty without any inequality. So this economic liberty without any inequality is basically the way that Moors have been taken by without checking the first two boxes, sovereignty, independence, integrity of his domain. What do I mean by that? Economic liberty, we see Moors have been trying to be industrious as Noble Dwali and stated, right? Doing business as, right? So a lot of Moors is doing business as organizations in the United States so they can do business. Some of them, you know, um, beating cases, some of them uh, not paying for things, some of them, um, you know, doing a number of small victory things. But they're small victories, right? It only gets you so far. If you don't check the two boxes, especially when you're not checking that box right. Economics, learn, learn doing business, is being industrious is fine. But to do business in the oppressor system opposed to your own is a problem. So that one box is partially, it was partially done. I see. That last point was, the last point is, yeah. Under the oppressor's system, no one did that. Right. And so that's why Noble Jali said, I brought you everything, yet. The half has not been told. So he couldn't tell us the half because international law was going to tell us the half. And so he did what he could. He didn't bring us everything in whole because the half has not been told. Well, then now, now it's being told by the so called quote unquote new moves. You already know that's a spiritual, spiritual concept. So, would you say like, would you say 
why do you think Noble Drew Ali didn't really speak upon international law as much as he did? Because I think if he what? did a little more, I think it, it would it would be a much of a confusion. Not saying that he didn't. Oh yeah, it's it's a lot of factors to um, put in the scope when we talk about Nova Jolly International Law because the Geneva Convention is international law. More say he was at the Geneva Convention. That's international law. The thing is, is look again, looking at the full scope of things, we know that there was Nova Jolly. We know that there was Cointel Pro. We know that um, there was even Dirty Moors, right? That Cointel Pro used, right? So when we look at the Act of Outer Series that came out in 1906, of course, no one really knew about that. Of course. But it's, it's this Cointel Pro that, like, a lot of Moors are familiar with any Moors treaty except the Treaty of Peace and Friendship. That's that's Cointel Pro direct. That's that's like Nike giving you two pair of shoes, put only two pair of shoes on display. They got a hundred different pairs in the back. They just trying to, you know, they got this their own little plan, right? So they they give you this treaty of peace and friendship. Only these two pair of shoes. All these other pair of shoes are these other treaties in the back, right? Because it's that that's how Cointel Pro operates. They 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 kept the, the actual substance the furthest away while they tried to put, they tried to funnel the, the substance into the mid heaven, if you will, and try to make like everything, like literally everything that like, you know, the government being, our stuff being incorporated in the United States is all that we need, you know, as long as we, you know, see Cannon Bay did that, you know, establishing states, so-called states, but getting them uh, sent and approved, stamped by the United States, incorporated in that state. So those are not true sovereign and independent states. See, it, it's, it's nowhere in a treaty that says to do that. When the United Nations, the highest system, supreme law of the land, has its own instructions as to how to establish a state. And it, none of it has to do with incorporating whatever you're doing in the state, so-called state that you're in, right? So it's a lot of things that was funneled. So, um, and that's just one of the aspects in relation to um, no drug international law, because, you know, uh, the statement, you know, and I'm not gonna stick on oral quotes too long, but, you know, what he said that, um, he had to, uh, somebody's thumb in his elbow, but basically, um, I can't remember at the moment, but basically, um, he had to, remember, he, he only did, had to, he, he could only do what he could. He only, he could only do what he could, right? So he had to do the most as far as um, diplomatic relations, et cetera, et cetera, while being incorporated in the United States, knowing that that's not the way to go. Like that's that's for now, that's the least we can do type of thing. Right. Tell yeah, everybody they, everything. They did what he could. Yeah. They was gonna go back to sleep. See it in a lot of more jump for joy right now, talking about more states is what we need because everybody's stiff neck and hard headed. Everybody stuck in their way. They think that, you know, doing business as an organization and having their so-called small victories and figuring out how to use the birth certificate and all this type of stuff is the way to go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the small, like, I be seeing, like, people using, like, the, utilizing the AA214, you know? If you, yeah, and then, like, you know, get a tax exempt, like, I, I would say that kind of would be an example of that as well. A small victory, you know. And see, as we transition out of this topic, um, 
the the thing about that is is that we the being that that's the least we can do with Noble Jolly brought, right? He he has started it. Things be obviously changed in their system, so we had to keep up, right? Um, the least we could do is at least learn from the European, right? Government, even though they're not a government, United States, they're a corporation acting like a government, so establishing anything in that is not firm. Uh, Chris Rock. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> Right, ah, that was clever. Um, so, it, as far as um, you know, that's the least we can do. But again, even till now, right? As more states, we use the straw man for now. We put the straw man in the more state government, so that way the whole thing is protected. Your whole corporation is protected, no matter what angle they come across. Um, no matter what angle. Um, so we put the whole so-called straw man or the non gear under the Moore state, and then we take them to court to enforce that uh, recognition, right, or that acknowledgement of the fact. Um, and we enact laws to, to protect that, enforce that even further, et cetera. So the least we can do, again, is... is like Noble Jolly said, we we keep excuse me, we keep our names, right? We keep, even even the Bibles, right? So and that's for a reason because we put it under the state. So we we was partially we was learning, you know, it was a stepping stone, you know. Um, so I'm not gonna say that that way was, you know, that's the dirty more way or anything like that. But that's at one point in time, that's the least we can do. You know, so you know, I, I I appreciate people who really you know teaching that type of stuff. You know, but it's it's we got to check the boxes in order now. Um, we got to establish sovereignty, independence, and then exercise our integrity of our domains, which is exercising everything in your national trust, right? Your property, all your assets, making sure your laws is enforced and respected, right? And then economic liberty. That's when we get the, the, the wealth coming in. That's when things start to, I'm not going to say ease up, but, you know, third heaven start to, you know, we ain't going to get into the science of three and all that. But. Why not? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> well, it's, I, gotta keep the law. I, I just say this. Um, you know, I, I founded this on this um, in my video dealing with telepathy as well in a psychomancy in the uh, book psychomancy it, it speaks on this as well. Uh, but three, you know, three seconds and uh, well, I'll I tell you this in the book psychomancy it says that well, by Frank Young it says that uh, if you think for something on three seconds, right, it is basically likely to come true based on the metaphysical uh, and the psychological aspect of your mind and your consciousness. So we're dealing with just uh, nature, basically, the science of nature. It's 339, too, as we speak. <laughs> right. So it's, 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 it's pretty ex extensive, but three, just dealing with manifestation, dealing with uh, uh, your, the physical body in general. Uh, three Seconds, uh, again, by Frank uh, Young in the book Psychomancy, he expounded upon that, um, et cetera, et cetera. We, the triangle, you know, um, we're dealing with the three, third dimension, Right, again, the body. The Trinity. So, uh, right, right. The child, right, again, birth, the fruition. So uh, as we do finish Article 3, <laughs> nothing, um, the, the second point 
It says, nothing in the present convention shall be construed as preventing the performance of consular functions by diplomatic relations. Okay. Now, consular functions, um, that's going to be another document. Okay. Um, and I will say that consular functions, it seems as though um, the personal aspect or the actual seat of office is, is more protected than act, the actual official. <laughs> Opposed to diplomatic relations, the actual official seems to be heavily protected. Um, but that's for, um, for we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as, as we go along. So Article 4 says the sending state must make certain, must make certain that the agreement of the receiving state has been given for the person of his purpose to accredit as the head of his mission to the state. Okay, so the heads of the mission shall be notified in agreement of everything that was going on. Right. The receiving state not obliged to give reasons to the sending state for the refusal of agreement. So if they refuse to let XYZ happen for them not to come, they don't need to give reason why. They said, you know, why they made that decision. And, and let's let's think about this before we continue. Well, we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about it because it's going to say that. In the article. article five says, the sending state may, after it has do, after it has given due notification to the receiving states concerned, accredit it a head of the mission or assign any member of a diplomatic staff as a case may be to more than one state unless there's expressed objection by any of the receiving state. So when we're talking about where it says it may send uh, a credit, a head of mission or assign any member of a diplomatic staff, right? So a head of a mission is a is official, a state official, right? A head of a state, right? Who's the head of a state? It's the state officials. Now it says any member of a diplomatic staff. Now, more science Temple of Americas have members, right? They don't have more nationals because a national is one that pledges allegiance to a state. Right, so to be a Morris national, you got to play the lease to a state. But if you're not playing the lease to a state, you're not a Morris national in truth. But where it says members, organizations have members, such as the more scientific America, right? That's a religious organization, right? Such as other organizations, right? These are members of diplomatic staff that can be um, sent on behalf of. Uh, diplomat on behalf of the state, right? So it can be a head of a mission, right? The head of a state, or it can be uh, a member of diplomatic staff, right? Um, and this is what you call track two diplomacy, okay? And with track two, another name for track two diplomacy is called back channel diplomacy. Say either or, okay? And that's basically uh, when non-governmental organizations or what you call NGOs, when non-governmental organizations or uh, uh, unofficial contacts, basically, people who are not officials, right? Unofficial contacts basically are sent on behalf of the state. That's called track two diplomacy or back channel uh, diplomacy. Okay. Um, so, uh, and, you know, uh, another, another state, another word is called non-state actors. Okay. Non-state actors. All these are synonymous terms. Okay. Um, it says, Article five, part two says, section two says, 
if the sending state accredits a head of a mission to one or more other more other states, it may establish a diplomatic mission headed by charge the affairs and intern in each state where the head of mission has not has not his permit has not his permanent seat. Hold on, I gotta read that. Up. If the sending state accredits the head of mission to one or more other states, it may establish a diplomatic mission headed by charge the affairs at interim in each state where the head of mission has not his permanent seat. Okay, so continuing, a head of mission or any member of diplomatic staff of the mission may act as representative of the sending state to any international organization. Okay. So um, again, we're talking about NGOs, right? Article six says, two or more states may accredit the same person as head of mission to another state, unless objection is offered by receiving state. Pretty basic, right? So I will tell you around Article 12 is where we'll start to begin to talk about um, another frequency of things. Article 7, subject to the provisions of Article 5, 8, 9, and 11, the sending state may freely appoint the members of the staff of the mission. In the case of military, naval, and air, art, air attaches, the receiving state may require require their name to be submitted beforehand for their for its approval. Okay. So when we're talking about the name, we're talking about what? The name of persons, right? Okay. So to give somebody the name, obviously that person got to be protected, right? We're talking about diplomatic relations, diplomats being protected, right? That's what this article, that's what this convention is all about. So in order to check the boxes, in order to submit a name, you got to already be protected. Who, who protects persons, states? Is the United States a state or is it a corporation? It's a corporation. Okay. Or we are taking the United States of America to court, right? Okay, well, everybody got to be United States officials, United States of American officials. Are they United States of American officials? No. Okay. Well, There's nothing like acquiesce. You see? So, to require the names to be submitted beforehand for its approval. Article 8 says members of the diplomatic staff of the mission should, in principle, be of the nationality of the sending state. So they must be American. If we got to enforce these, these conventions, that pretty much gives us right there what we got to call them American. Right. Um, must be of the nationality. Now, well, that's another topic, but a nationality of the sending state. Members of uh, members of, di of the diplomatic staff of the mission may not be appointed from among persons having nationality of receiving state, except with the consent of the state, which may be withdrawn at any time. Okay, so that's another piece that you can think on multiple levels. Okay, where it says. Members of the diplomatic staff of the mission may not be appointed from among persons having the nationality of the receiving state. Okay, so the the diplomatic staff, right, of the sending state, um, may not be appointed, right. By by receiving state more states, except with the consent of the state, 
which may be withdrawn at any time. Who withdrawn at any time? Receive a state withdrawn. Warrants receive a state. Well, be us then. We'll look at what yeah. so what we receive. We did receive a state. And then it says, except with the consent of the state which may be withdrawn at any time. So the state that was withdrawn is the United States of America. Why did, why did they withdraw? Because there's no officials, there's nobody took oath to the United States of America. They all took oath to the United States. Right, they all took oath to a corporation. There's nobody in the seats of the United States of America. We're taking United States of America to court, right? So it says, except with the consent of the state, the consent, the consent is the Treaty of Peace and Friendship, right? We, we already got a, a list of 25 articles of what we have been given consent to, right? So the consent is that United States, even though their corporation doing business as the United States of America, they're the so-called trustees of, of that, right? They must still uphold their obligations regardless of what they do. They can even create it, they can create however many corporations they want, they still gotta uphold the obligations. So being that we fail and they still must uphold the obligation. Why? Because the United Nations, they even created laws for stateless people. Why? Because we were stateless. They knew what the United States was up to. They know that the United States of America is what you call a part of the P5 which is the permanent five, right? They also know that the United States of America is truly the United States doing business in the United States of America. But the only people that can do something about that is us. Because they have to follow the laws just like we do. They can only do so much, right? So it all comes back to us at the end of the day. So the consent is that we can we gave consent for them to be here for for so long, at least fifty years, right? And that they must uphold the obligations even if we fall. So the consent of the state, right? We gave consent. Uh, where was I at? Uh, which may be withdrawn at any time. Who withdrew? The consent. That's mutual agreement withdrawn at any time. So basically, you're saying that the receiving state cannot appoint anybody, but the only time they can is when the consent of the state, which may be withdrawn at any time, when the state withdrew at any time, then you, you, we can appoint them. So they're, therefore, they're under Moorish law, right? So there's even more doing business as organizations in the United States that's um, even um, having situations where, depending on how they set themselves up in, their, in the United States system, they can even appoint certain officers, even though they're still truthfully more subjects in international law because they've been subjugated. Right, you're gonna be national, not subject. So they give you small victories to keep that hamster wheel going. That's the only thing they can pin on to slow down the movement. They can't stop it, but they can slow it down. 
right? So the, that's that's a that's a good article to exercise that um, multi layer thinking, right? Because our situation is a little different than other people. Two jurisdictions on one landmass. Right. So um, Article 8, Section 3 says the receiving state may reserve the same right with regard to its nationals of the third state who are not also nationals of the sending state. Okay. And third state would be us, right? Let's just read that over. You made that clear. I don't want to waste too much time on these points. Uh, so this is going to be a part two. I don't want to say this is a waste of time. But there, this is a part two because it is going to be a part two to this. But let's read this, this last point right quick. It says, the receiving state may reserve the same right with the Nash, with regard to the nationals of the third state, who are not also nationals of the sending state, so they reserve they the, the same rights, right? So this is setting them up. No matter how how much how they want to be corporations or not, this is the doorway for them to step into statehood. But that's a whole another problem. For them. Article 9 says, the receiving state may at any time and without having the, to explain its decision, notify the sending state that the head of the mission or any member of the diplomatic staff of the mission is persona non grata or that any other member of the staff of the mission is not accepted. So persona non grata means a person who is not accepted. In any mission, in any such case, the sending state shall, as appropriate, either recall the person concerned or terminate his functions with a mission. A person with a person may be declared non grata or not acceptable before arriving in the territory of the receiving state. Okay, so if you guys have seen, <laughs> um, what's his name? I think he changed his name, but I think his name used to be Ennis Cantor or something. Cantor Ennis or something, but he was recently. Um, Turkey had put a five hundred thousand bounty dollar bounty on him. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he's what you consider personal non grata <laughs> or not accepted because he's speaking out against Turkey, and so. Um, even though, uh, and, and see, what we're talking about, when you're talking about visas, you know, somebody who may be not a quote-unquote citizen of another state, right, you're even talking about diplomatic relations to that degree, right? So, um, you know, uh, uh, there's, there's something else I was about to say. Uh, oh, oh, okay. We'll, but we'll go into that around Article 12. Um, so part section two of Article 9 says, if the sending state refuses or fails within reasonable period to carry out its obligations under paragraph one of this article, the receiving state may refuse to reorganize the person concerned as a member of the mission. Okay. So we just follow through with the last point. Article 10 says the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the receiving state or such other ministry as may be agreed shall be notified of the appointment of the members, the appointment of members of the mission, their arrival and their final departure, or the termination of their functions with the mission. So this is a box that must be checked. This is instruction. The Minister of Foreign Affairs must be notified. Notified of what? The appointment of the members of the mission. 
the arrival and the final departure of their terminate or termination of their functions with the mission. Right. So when you come in, what you're doing, how long you're staying, when you're leaving. Right. That's a box that must be checked. That's an instruction to follow. The rest of these points are pretty much in support of point A. Okay. So then we go down to um, section two, where it says, where possible, prior notification of arrival and final departure shall also be given. Check the boxes, right? In the absence of specific agreement as to the state, and in, in, as we go throughout these documents, this document, um, if any type of realistic question, situation pops up in you guys' head, I definitely encourage you guys to speak on it, comment, or ask about it, you know, and how we can exercise that reality, you know? Because as we get down to Article 12, we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Okay. So uh, Article 11 says, in the absence of specific agreement as to the size of the mission, the receiving state may require that the size of the mission be kept within the limits considered by it to be reasonable and normal, having regard to circumstances and conditions in the receiving state and to the needs of the particular mission. Let me make sure. Okay. Islam, to you. Is you? Oh, ah, yeah. Islam, I'm just tuning in. Islam is love. Good to have you. Where was I at? Uh, Okay. Article 11, Section 2 says the receiving state may equally within similar bounds and on a non discriminatory basis refuse to accept officials of a particular category. Okay. So you can be picky, right? You gotta protect yourself. Article 12. Um, the sending state may not within, may without the prior express consent of the receiving state establishes office, offices forming part of the mission in localities other than those in which the mission itself is established. Okay, this was not the article I thought it was. It might be Article 20 or 21. But this is still important because we're talking about offices. What are offices? We're talking about these buildings that we step into in due time, right? So it says the sending state may not, without the prior express consent of the receiving state, so without our permission, they cannot establish these offices, right? Um, forming part of the mission in localities. Now, we have to take this in full scope, though. There's act of the series that allowed them to do so much, right? It's a treaty of peace and friendship that allowed them to do commerce, right? So we have to take this into full so scope as far as what buildings in due time as we check the box. Because there's going to be more than one time that we take them to court for more than one reason, right? We take them to court the first time. Why? Sovereignty and independence and integrity of domains. That's pretty much. The first principle a lot of times is the second principle because they grow into each other, right? That's why diplomatic relations has still a lot to do with consular relations. They grow into each other, right? Um, so um, as we, so uh, as we, Think about the full scope of things in Article 12. We're talking about offices established, right, without consent. Now, what do we give consent to? We got to uh, talk about that in relation to all the Moorish treaties, right? 
to see what buildings, what is here, what is lawful, what is not. But we got to check more. A lot of Moors just want to say everything is not ours. Like we didn't establish a treaty of peace and friendship with them to do commerce, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Well, everybody has boxes to check. Okay. It's a due process of law must take its course. Everything will not happen over, not literally everything, right? There, there must be a due process of law, which means time, right? In which things can saturate, your, your understanding of law can saturate in the meantime, okay? As we learn government. So Article 13 says the head of the mission is considered as having taken up his functions in the receiving state, either when he has presented his credentials or he has been notified his arrival and true copy of his credentials has been presented to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in the receiving state or such other ministry has been agreed in accordance with the practice prevailing in the receiving state which shall be applied in a uniform manner. Okay, so true copy of the credentials must be presented to the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the true copy, right? Officials of the United States of America must. That's, that's, who, it, that's who the treaty of peace, that's who these agreements are with, right? So we're talking about those officials, not the United States. But boxes gotta be checked first. In the meantime, in between time, we can learn how to run government nonetheless, regardless of how anybody else can check the box, right? One, well, okay. It goes to another point, section two of article 13 says, the order of the presentation of credentials or of a true copy thereof will be determined by the date and time of the arrival in the, of the head of mission. Okay, so uh, it might be, okay, it is Article 20, okay, yeah, my fault, it was Article 20, not 12. So Article 14 says, the heads of mission are divided into three classes, namely the ambassador or the nuncios accredited to the head of state, right? B says that, the envoys, ministers, and the internuncios are credited to the head of state. The charge of affairs are credited to the minister of foreign affairs, right? Those are the three classes, okay? The, the ambassador, the envoys, and charge the affairs, right? Um, it says, Except as concerns precedence and etiquette, etiquette. I cannot say that word. Etiquette. There shall be no differentiation between the heads of mission by reason of their class. Article fifteen: The class to which the heads of their mission are to be assigned shall be agreed between states. Okay. So documentation, who is who, three between the states, right? These are boxes. This is just simply how you can document. It's telling you what to put, right? Simple as that. Just check the box, right? Hold a document of just simply what it tells you to put on the paper, right? And that's another thing. We have to simplify this. Okay, a lot of this stuff is what you call magi talk, or some people like to call it, right? Because all the priests and priestesses, they were all so-called a part of the government back in ancient times. They always incorporated as a part of the government. So our job is to demystify all of this, simplify this. It's more favorable and more um, considerate to do that. Um, so um, article 16 or yeah, 16 
heads of the mission shall take proceedings in their respective classes in order of the date and the time of taking up their function in accordance with Article 13. Alterations in the credentials of the head of the mission, not involving any change of class, shall not affect his proceedings. Okay. We're going to go to Article 17, which says the proceedings of the members of the diplomatic staff of the mission shall be notified by the head of the mission and the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the minute, excuse me, shall be notified by the head of the mission to the Minister of Foreign Affairs or such other ministry as may be agreed. Article 18, the procedure of the observe, the procedure to be observed in each state for the reception of the heads of the mission shall be uniform in respect of each class. 19. If the post of the head of the mission is vacant, or if the head of the mission is unable to perform his function, charge the affairs ad interim, shall not provisionally as the head of the mission, should act provisionally as the head of the mission. Okay. The name of the charge the affairs ad interim shall be notified either by the head of the mission or in the case he is unable to do so by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the descending state to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the receiving state or the or such other ministry as may be agreed. Okay, so it's talking, it's telling you how to plug and play if people are not present. Uh, we're going to go to Article 20 where it says the mission and its head shall be shall have the right of the use of the flag and the emblem of the sending state on the premises of the mission okay including the resi the residence of the head of the mission and on his means of transport okay so the sending state has the right to use flags and emblems just as moore's been trying to do but who is the sending state america right they have the right to use, in, in this case, they're American, uh, to use flags and emblems, just as we have the right, okay? So whenever we go, right? So we gotta think about this. Think about this in a little bit, three layers, right? They're acting as if they're the receiving state. They're acting as if this is their land, right? Because more states have been um, have were were not existent for a long time, right? So now that that's changing, they're going to realize that they are not just that they realize in Colorado that they're not the um, receiving state. Okay, they're actually the sending state. Okay, so. Um, this applies whenever we go elsewhere. Okay, so just if they want to state that we're the city state, we're driving around with our flags and emblems, et cetera, right? We have the same right. This, this We can enforce this convention elsewhere, all around the world, right? Our flags and emblems as diplomats, diplomatic representatives, delegates, et cetera, nationals. Right. So um, it says, and on his means of transport. So we're talking about travel. Okay. Article 21 says the receiving state shall either facilitate that. And, and think about this before we continue. Article 20 diplomatic relations in general is, is what? Friendly application documentation, friendly mediumships, right? It takes documentation, nonetheless. It takes building with governments, so-called states, right? To establish, or even organization, right? To establish some type of growth to some degree, right? So um, diplomatic relations in your state 
building, face-to-face -face government meetings, even though they're a, uh, a corporation, an international organization, right? Because this is enforcing integrity of domains. We're here for treaty of peace and friendship. Now, of course, there's always going to be two sides of the court, right? You got yin and yang, masculine and feminine. There's two sides of the court, right? So what is that for? That's for consular relations. That's what you call arbitration. Okay, that's when we get into that speed. Okay, but first we have to meet each other first, greet each other first, right? We don't approach with static. We're here for diplomatic relations. This is the first step, right? But for any state, we want to build a rapport, right? We want to the, the whole point of diplomatic relations is to, like it, as it stated before, to uh, to um, for economic growth, cultural development, right? So scientific relations. Okay, so we're talking about you, there. There may be even a state with similar, very similar cultural. Um, aspects, but the people, uh, there's more people in that state who are not from there, they're from somewhere else. So a lot of times, diplomatic relations are established because obviously, don't, don't buy with no problems, right? So they wanna secure, security, diplomatic relations is about security, right? Securing a friendship, securing the first sphere. Right, it's about shaking that hand, right? So it's about, okay, so diplomatic relations, right, is you traveling, right, as a government official, is you traveling, dropping off documents, right, constantly relations documents to the post office. Right, you get pulled over. You got your state ID. It's your first time anybody has used it in the state. So obviously, integrity of domains has not been exercised. Right, first time doing it. Right. Now, of course, that can go a numerous, a numerous amount of ways. But it's telling you right here. This is diplomatic relations. In that moment, it's diplomatic relations. Okay. Now I know you heard of dipset before. Right? Some of us heard of dipset. Yep. We talk all a lot about um you know uh, in their, in the music they talk a lot about, you know, so called being a diplomatic Taliban and not getting in trouble because, you know, they diplomats and all this types of stuff. Right? Diplomatic relations. That, that was a, if, if you look up videos on YouTube, you'll find out um, small, even cartoon scenarios about um, uh, how diplomats cannot be touched. And for a long time, it was an issue um, in regards to, um, you know, uh, what they call uh, contraband, and, you know, all this type of stuff. Uh, so, it's, it's, and I say that to say that amongst you being um, pulled over, right, you have protection according to this, this uh, treaty, okay, this convention. Just a second, guys, bear with me. So, uh, 
diplomatic relations is is in that moment, right? As a government official, okay. Uh, and there's a good book. Let's see. This is the name of the book in which that Oxford comment, the Oxford commentaries on international law, diplomatic law. Okay, it's the commentary on divine and conventional diplomatic relations. And this book um, is quite wordy, but it's a good book to understand the, the commentaries. And commentaries are basically um, different legal and lawful references of uh, how you can understand the, the particular document in a more extensive manner. So it'll bring up cases. You know, so you expound on a certain article, right? So commentaries are good to read. Let me check to see if anybody else came in. Okay. Peace, Ma. Peace, peace. Okay, so diplomatic relations, just to get it understood, is pretty much um, the first thing that must be done. Okay. Um, and, and it's different from recognition of the state as well. So there's, there's what, what's called, we went over what's called track two diplomacy, right? And I'm kind of just recapping before we continue. We went over what's called track two diplomacy right which is being able to send um, even unofficials or non-government officials to be representatives for a state right or diplomats right um, and there's even what's called economic diplomacy okay and that's basically um when you know uh international policies are established to basically help the growth of the state, okay? Especially when they're in a financial crisis, okay? So that's called economic diplomacy. So economic diplomacy is what? Economics, that's what the triple principle, that's the final step of the triple principle, right? So yeah, a lot of our first steps build into the second and even better steps. But so what? what is, yeah, let's just take a guess. At I, I'll ask y'all before I say anything else. What does um, where where did I just read that? Well, anyways, where does where does um, economic diplomacy? What does that mean to y'all? You know, as far as building uh, international coalitions, right? Policies. Uh, to basically help countries recover from financial crisis. So think about our position, right? What is that? What does this afternoon look like? What does this? What does this look like? We can do. How can we exercise economic? Well, I, I would say uh, communication and a build up. Um, some along the lines of recognizing the economic avenue. If um, diplomatic relations along those lines. We're talking about economics. We're talking about how can we re re rebuild our stuff financially? So we talk about exercising wealth, right? So we talk about basically at the end of the day, people, there, there are states, even organizations, right? That there's even um, organizations in the United Nations that assist other states financially. This is what you call economic diplomacy, 
when you establish relations specifically for uh not specifically for but um for establish diplomatic relations uh one of the reasons being for economic diplomacy which basically means to help people out financially so you reach out to other states and even organization in what type of manner in that manner right now we're talking about more you are just playing rich right well we know in international law there's people that want to assist us right okay so let's let's think upon this avenue right on how we can filter bottleneck these avenues into um eventually working for yourself eventually rebuilding the community right but we have to establish layer by layer avenue by avenue right so economic diplomacy yes we will financially help you right xyz dollars right we're talking about states here right i have a question mm -hmm. so could um dang i lost it um yeah, I lost it. It was pertaining to land, though. Like, could that be, like, say, dang, I just had it. I lost it, though. But um, it was along the lines of land being gifted, in a sense, instead of, like, it being financial. Could it? Does it always have to be, like, a, like a, uh, dang, I lost it. I'm just thinking about it in terms of, like, physical, physical commodities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. so in terms of land, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's land in your state, we're talking about integrity of your domain. So this is yours already. Mm -hmm. In respect I to, uh, I guess you. You see? Yeah, so, I guess you. Um, and that's a good avenue to also open up as well because in, in regards to state property, and um, you know, individual property, right? So you might own something. You might own something. The state might own something, right? Um, you got to this is this is say more states get a state building, right? Um, opposed to you going out and getting the house, right? Of course, that's different avenues in which those must be um, laws must be enacted to exercise all that as well in due time, but. Um, so that's the difference, you know, just to kind of speak on that, you know, because I, even though it's obvious, we, we have to rebrand everything. You know what I mean? So I'm, I'm sure that that was pretty much obvious as far as state own something, individuals own something. But, you know, we, we basically reverse it. They picture us in that situation and be like, okay, you know, uh, so our land in this state, right? Yes, it's this individual's by right because X, Y, Z, or yes, it's the state's by right because X, Y, Z, right? Other land outside the states, well, that's according to their state, you know, that's their that state. Um, uh, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a lot of unwavering principles, you know, um, even when, information being held out. There's a lot of more, there's a lot of spiritual people in general that see the pyramids, that see uh, giants and Smithsonian information being held from us, right? Um, all information is going to be a part of the state, just like it's part of their so-called state, right? In due time, you know, right? Everybody want to go travel to inner earth and, uh, heart go take control of heart and get rid of 5g all this stuff is in the states you see what i'm saying so for us to ground all of this anything that spirituality is talking about it starts with nationality which is connecting yourself to the earth grounding yourself this is the first step this is like the baby coming out the womb in a new age and everybody must do it. This is the whole every knee shall bow type of thing because these are the laws that are being realized because we've been 
not followed in order for our earthly liberation, right? So and when we talk about nationality in the whole, we talk about a nation, that's a whole sea, that's a whole plane. We talk about the navel, right? Connection from the center, right? So uh, let's continue with this document. Um, and we're gonna, uh, let's see. We're gonna stop, we're on the next page here. Um, Article 21 says, the receiving state shall either facilitate acquisition on its territory in accordance with its laws by the sending state of premises necessary for its mission or, or assist to the later in attaining accommodation in some other way. Okay. So acquisition, right, facilitate the acquisition on its territory in accordance to the law. What laws? Well, we got to create laws. We got to enact laws. What laws do we have? We got treaties, right? But treaties can be enforced by states based on their law. What laws? We got to create laws first and enforce them specifically. What does that mean? Well, no, what Ali said, there's no need to reinvent the wheel, right? Okay, so that means the laws are already out there. What does that mean? We got to know how to plug and play real good. We got to know how to be the greatest editors of all time. That's that there's no need to reinvent. Ease up on the stress. There's nothing to reinvent. We just got to know. Where to put what? So uh, it says it also, where necessary, assist missions in obtaining suitable accommodations for their members. Okay. Article 22, the premises of the mission shall be inviolable, which means it should not be violated. Okay. The agents of the receiving state may not enter them except with the consent of the head of the mission. The receiving state is under a special duty to take appropriate steps to protect the premises of the mission against the intrusion or damage and to prevent any disturbance of the peace of the mission or impairment of, it, impairment of its dignity. Okay. Duties of the head of the mission. Okay. The premises of the mission their furnishings and other property thereon and other means of transport of the mission shall be immune from search, requisition, attachment, or execution. So you traveling, you should be immune, right? Like a building up an immune system of protection, right? You should be immune from search, requisition, attachment, or execution. The, the premises of the mission, what's the premises, the territory, what's the territory, the territory of the state, you're the receiving state, right? Exercise and integrity of domains, right? What a dependent state, they're not a true state, they're not an independent state, they're a dependent state. So you're doing diplomatic relations with a dependent state, right? That's what they're called for that. They're truly an international organization. The United States of America is an independent state. Right. So, um, uh, Article 23 the sending state of the head of the mission shall be exempt from all national, regional, and municipal dues and taxes in respect to the, the premises in respect of the premises of the mission, whether owned or leased, other than such represent payment for specific services rendered. Okay, the exemption from taxation rendered to it to in this article shall not apply to such dues and taxes payable under the law of the receiving state by persons contracting with the sending state or the head of the mission. So taxes you did. Right, as a diplomat. Right. Basically.
Article 24, and this is the last page we'll um, be reading from. Article 24, the archives and documents of the mission shall be inviolable at any time and wherever they may be. So inviolable again means they shall not be violated. Cannot be violated. Article 25, the receiving state shall accord full facilities for the poor performance of the functions of the mission. Article 26, subject to its laws and regulations concerning zones entry into which it into which is prohibited or regulated for reasons of national security. Remember, diplomatic relations is about security. All right. Um, the receiving state shall ensure to all members of the mission freedom of movement and travel in its territory. Okay. So this is rendering national security laws right to be enacted. Article 27, the receiving state shall permit and protect free communication on the part of the mission of all official purposes in communicating with the government and of the missions and other missions and consultants, consult consulate, excuse me, of the city state, wherever situated, the mission may employ all appropriate means, including diplomatic countries, or excuse me, couriers, and messages in code and cipher. However, the mission may install and use a wireless transmitter only with the consent of the receiving state. Okay, so this is uh, instructions as far as um, you'll, you'll see that when you study diplomatic relations, they talk about a diplomatic bag in which must not be searched and seized, and et cetera, right? So this is one of those types of instructions, right? Just particular instructions, okay? The official correspondence of the mission shall be inviolable. Official correspondence means all correspondence relating to the mission and its function. Okay, so all correspondence relating to the mission. Okay, what, what, what mission? In that book, again, that I showed you on the commentaries, it speaks on separating personal, your personal life, and uh, your diplomatic relations, right? So uh, uh, that's, that's a good book to read in regards to that. But again, we must think our situation is different, okay? So simply going to, again, um, drop off documentation at the post office is, is diplomatic work. Okay. Um, uh, section three, the diplomatic bag shall not be open or detained. That's what I was talking about earlier. The packages constituting the diplomatic bag must be must bear visible external marks of their character and may contain only diplomat diplomatic documents or articles intended for use for official use. The diplomatic carrier who shall be provided with an official document indicating his status and member of package constituting the diplomatic bag shall be protected by the receiving state in the performance of his function. He shall employ, or excuse me, he shall enjoy persons in viability and shall not be liable to any form of arrest or detention. Okay. The sending state of the mission may designate diplomatic couriers ad hoc. In such cases, the provisions of paragraph five of this article shall also apply, except that the immunities therein mentioned shall, shall cease to apply in such a courier has delivered to the consignments the diplomatic bag in his charge. Okay, so as we come to a close, read the last point. A diplomatic bag may be entrusted to the captain of the commercial aircraft scheduled to a land, to land 
at an authorized port of entry. He shall be provided with an official document indicating the number of packages constituting the bag, but he shall not be considered to be a diplomatic carrier. The mission may send one of the one of its members to take provisions, excuse me, possession of the diplomatic bag directly and freely of the captain of the aircraft. Okay. So this document thus far, well, let's go back and read. Yeah, we'll, we'll go over um, Article 28 in part two. We'll start off there. Um, so this, this document is a good initial phase to understand in regards to us establishing ourselves as states. Okay, it's how we operate in love by law, because we're talking about friendly and peaceful relations, right? Peace, we talk about love, right? Solidifying love, right? We're not just talking about love and, you know, uh, just speaking it, right? Peace is more so the balanced aspect of all this, okay? The grounded aspect of all this, okay? Um, so uh, this, this document, as we finish this document, we'll go into consular relations, okay? Um, I, I posted uh, on Twitter uh, the documents that we, Maru State Republic, have acceded to, which is 34 in number. Um, these particular documents are all the, the conventions and treaties that we'll be specifically talking about throughout our study session, because you cannot enforce a treaty if you not have a, if you have not acceded to. Okay, of course, all the treaties such as the Treaty of Madrid, Act of Outer Series, are the treaties that have given us our power to be states. Right. Um, so, uh, and, and those go without to say. But um, I, I, I should have had that in this class, but I'll show you guys in the next class the actual list of treaties, if you haven't seen that already in conventions, then we'll be talking about in a specific order. Okay, so uh, diplomatic relations, consular relations, and we'll also go over the, the charter of the United Nations. Okay. Um, we, we spent some time speaking on how to establish a state, what is a state, uh, spent a, a good amount of videos on that. Um, so now it's time to start another initiatory phase of a, a thing, a focus, uh, diplomatic relations, consular relations, as well as the Charter of the United Nations. Okay. Um, so uh, with that, um, I'll yield to the, the floor to any comments or questions that may, uh, that may be. Nobody? Okay. I guess that was good, a good breakdown, huh? Um, so um, again, I, I encourage everybody to uh, read this document in their own time. Um, time is 444. Um, if there are there, there are no questions or comments at this time, we can uh, conclude this class or the study session and pretty much um, start where we left off. So no questions. I guess I'll just uh, end with something real quick. Closing, closing comment. Definitely understood the purpose of a state as far as a domain. Put people on notice so we can enforce our own laws, our law. Um, ICJs. 
Yeah, of course, we we as a Morris State are the receivers of the United States quote unquote corporation. We'll be sending out, and we will be the receivers. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in this convention, we're, we're receiving state. So we will be, like I said, receiving or putting them under rock and law, just as we're receiving or putting um, the straw man, so quote unquote, under the, 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 Mor the Moroccan states. And uh, we're simply picking up where we left, where we left off. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that all makes perfect sense. It's all about just doing, like you said, everything in the correct order so that you can, you know, so we'll be able to enforce these things in due time. There's a lot of things that we're doing now, it's probably premature, you know. Premature things. It's kind of out of order. A few things you can see. Yeah, and just as a uh, uh, dare state, the like the order. As we read articles um, and see the order of these articles, right? We see the the build up. It's like a story. Right, it, it gives you the definitions as if it was the context of a book, right? Um, then it goes into uh, the basics, right? The, the, the first few articles might expound upon things in a general sense, right? Therefore, you can just use those first few articles and then it goes in a breakdown, right? Or, you know, the body might operate different, right? But nonetheless, the order of the articles in the treaties and conventions are in that order for a specific reason because that's the numbering of the instructions a lot of times, right? So if we haven't checked article one, if you wanna say, without checking art box, the, the instructions or the box in article one, two and three, checking out boxes in article four, five and six, a lot of times are weird, right? So it's a ritual, right? It's a buildup. It's a, you know, it's, 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 if you want to just say consciousness naturally blooming out just in law and numbers, <laughs> you know, so um, um, we, can, we can look at it that way and even how religion, um, remember how Noble Jali used that to shroud everything and that's the first amendment in the United States Constitution, right, so uh, even in that sense, right, we're talking about using the chronological order or the subsequent order of things, um, because that's how that's how things are supposed to be done. Yeah, so I agree 100%. Also, I feel like that's where a lot of the confusion has come from amongst the more promoting certain things or claiming certain titles or saying that they control certain venues without taking those steps, you know, jumping from the first step all the way to the sixth step and then promoting that is never gonna be the right thing to push because you're steering the people astray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's, I, I, I felt that this, this, this is a good, good meeting. Uh, good breakdown of things. Um, again, this is the introductory phase. So I will, I'll try to have videos next time um, uh, uh, of people speaking on a few different points. I'm not sure how to, my phone is, is acting crazy. So in order for me to speak on my phone that I'm using now, I have to use my headphones. If I don't, you guys won't be able to hear me. So, uh, and if I try to show videos with these headphones, you guys won't be able to hear the video. So um, I'll, I'll figure out uh, a way to do this here soon. But um, 
we can conclude the class there if there are no more comments or questions. So since there are no more comments or questions, um, with that said, inshallah, I bless you all. I'll post the video on YouTube and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace, peace. Thank you. Peace. Peace and love.